Hey guys, I'm Kobe Dev, and this is kind of like a part two to my other video, the West Programming Languages. Today, we're looking at the most cursed ones. All of these are super weird, they're made as jokes, and are just purely just for fun. Well, at least they're fun for people who have too much free time to actually learn the languages. Speaking of which, today I'm covering Intercal, Whitespace, Pete, and Velaso. And just a quick heads up before I start, I would really appreciate any sort of support, whether it just be, you know, watching the video to the end, or if you want to leave me a message in the comments, that would be even better. Because even though the likes and subscriber numbers may look cool, you know, I would, I would actually rather people just letting me know I can make my videos better, or just leaving a kind message in general. So without any further ado, let's get into it. I know I did just say, let's get into it, but I just want to quickly describe what esoteric means. Think of programming languages like tools in a toolbox. Most tools are straightforward and designed for common tasks, like a screwdriver. And then now imagine if someone handed you a tool that looked like a feather and then said, use this to tighten screws. That feather tool is esoteric. It's peculiar, unconventional, and not what you'd expect. So in the context of programming, an esoteric language is like that feather tool. It's weird, not widely used for practical purposes, and is often just created more for fun, experimentation, or to challenge in the norm, rather than just everyday coding tasks. Now, first off, we have Intercal. It started way back in 1972, which is over half a century ago, when two Princeton University students, Don Woods and James M. Lyon, made the language as a joke. The main unique thing about it is it relates to the struggle every programmer has when coding. Sometimes we feel as if no matter what we do, the program just doesn't work. Even Google searches, finding nine-year-old Reddit posts, and scrolling through Stack Overflow, it just doesn't work. Then when you're at the very last ounce of your patience, you find the error. It's a mixed bag of feelings because you're relieved, but also so infuriated at your absolute stupidity because you added 11 instead of 1 because your 10 year old keyboard malfunctioned. Basically, Intercal makes fun of these moments by taunting users by requiring the use of proper manners like saying please every once in a while. Let's talk about its strangeness. See, Intercal swaps the major and minor version numbers compared to the tradition. Its syntax is intentionally designed to be aesthetically unpleasing with statements like read out, ignore, forget, and my favorite one, please. Because if you use it too much, your program may be rejected for being too polite, not enough, and you're being rude. Despite its intentional complexity and wordy syntax, Intercal is Turing complete, which just means it can solve any logical problem. However, it is super limited in its efficiency and speed. If you thought Hello World was straightforward, think again. In Intercal, it involves a bunch of convoluted statements that make your once simple Hello World statement a pain to understand. And Intercal has three dialects which are C Intercal, Try Intercal, and CLC Intercal. Second language I'm covering is called Whitespace. Imagine a programming language where the majority of code itself is invisible. Commands are made from spaces, tabs, and line feed, which is just a fancy way of saying the enter key. The language ignores all other characters because who needs them really? It's like Morse code, but instead of dots and dashes, there are tabs and spaces. Whitespace is a stack-based language as well. If you don't know what a stack is, imagine a stack like a buffet's plate stack. It's got the last in first out, or LIFO, meaning that the last plate you grab is the first to go back. In programming, it's a collection of items of the same type, and you can only add or remove items at the top, just like plates at a buffet. It keeps things neat and organized, ensuring only the most recent data is the first to be used. Basic commands are categorized into what is called instruction modification parameters, or IMPs for short, each with its own set of operations. While this language may seem pretty low level, you can make sense of it if you try really hard. And by the, by the way, when I say low level, I don't mean it's easy to understand. I mean low level as in it's very similar to binary, which is the lowest level of them all. And then up the line it goes assembly code, which is higher level than binary, but still relatively low level. And then above that you got other sorts of code like C sharp. And then at the very top you've got object oriented code, which is like C++ and stuff like that. Anyways, quick tangent aside, the IMPs, which are space, tab and then space, tab and then tab, enter and then tab and then enter. Sorry, that's a bit of a mouthful. Each contribute to make a Turing complete language. 
By using these IMPs, you can do stack manipulation, which is just adjusting the order of data. You can do arithmetic, heap access, which is getting data from memory. You can do flow control, which is managing program execution and decision making. And you can also do input and output. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in a relatively basic language, you could say. In white space, the spaces represent zeros and tabs represent ones. And a lot of code finishes, which will shock you when there is a new line. Also, the first character determines the sign, because even in white space, positive and negative numbers matter. So essentially, you're programming in a harder version of binary, because it's just invisible binary. So it's, yeah, ridiculous. Let's actually look at some sample code. Here is how to print hello world in white space. No, I'm just kidding. His actual solution with spaces and tabs being highlighted, so you actually can see somewhat, but it still doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, let's just move on to the next one. Our third language is called Pete. Instead of coding with boring letters and numbers, you know, who needs those? Pete, which is named after the artist Piet Mondarian, you can literally paint a picture to create a program. Colors aren't just for looks, they're the actual language too. Each color represents a different command. In Pete, a program is a combination of color blocks. A color block is a cluster of the same color pixels, which is also called codels, and these blocks form the basis of your code. The interpreter reads the code from the top left and then can be directed by manipulating the direction pointer or DP for short and the code elf chooser or CC for short. The DP moves through the color blocks in the program and the CC helps when there are multiple blocks to choose from. The CC points left or right and selects the farthest block in the direction for execution. And it's kind of like a guide for the DP. It helps it decide which way to go when faced with multiple options. And the commands themselves are represented as lightness and hue changes from the previous codel. I won't go over the full list of commands like I did for the previous one because Pete has a lot more, but here is the list if you're interested. And when it comes to numbers, each non-black and non-white color block symbolizes an integer. The interpreter won't automatically push these values onto the stack though, you've got to actually tell it to do so. You may be wondering what the black and white pixels do. Well, the black pixels act as a wall for the direction pointer. If it hits one of these, it stops and then rotates one movement clockwise or 90 degrees clockwise basically, and it just keeps going. If it does this multiple times and cannot get to the next color block, then the program is finished. This is actually the only way to stop a Piet program, otherwise it's just going forever. The white pixels are basically the opposite of black pixels, because if the DP comes into contact with it, the interpreter will basically just ignore it and the DP will continue on its journey. White pixels are purely aesthetic and don't have any, you know, functional use. Our fourth and final language we're covering today is called Velado. It was created by Daniel Temkin in 2009, and it kind of steps away from the traditional code and instead uses musical notes. In Velado, the musical intervals, which are like perfect fifths and stuff like that, are how you code. If you don't know, musical intervals refer to the pitch difference between two notes. To create a hello world in Velato, you not only need a deep understanding of low-level computing, but also an extensive knowledge of music theory, which to be fair, I'm not an expert in either. The journey in Velato starts with the first note, known as the command root. This single note sets the tone for the entire composition, and it kind of acts as a base note for the rest of the notes after. The language actually has 12 main commands and 29 expressions, which includes stuff like addition, logic, and defining variables and stuff like that. The pitch of consecutive notes determines the specific instruction or operation to be executed. Here's the full table of commands. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, but if you do want to read through, just pause the video at any time. And also, here are the 29 expressions in Velato. Finally, Velato handles variables pretty uniquely, like if the pitch or the octave changes, the variable, I guess, pitch doesn't change, which makes coding in Velato a lot easier and avoids, you know, confusion and stuff like that. Because imagine different pitches for the same variable, it would be very, like, a lot more confusing than it should be. But yeah, that's all for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know what I did right or what I could do to do better, because I'm always looking in how I can improve my videos to make better content for you guys. That really means a lot to me. But yeah, that's all for me today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.